Good evening. Tonight, we will be looking at the Zodiac Killer, who falls into the category of serial killers who were never identified. As always, if you enjoy, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and even subscribe. Without further ado, let's begin. The Zodiac Killer is one of the most notorious unidentified killers of the 20th century. In the late 1960s and early 70s, he murdered at least 5 people, so he claims to have killed 37. And in the decades since, people have continued to collect facts about the Zodiac Killer and speculate about his identity. In the last year, the Zodiac has been getting renewed attention due to the bizarre and, let's face it, sort of hilarious meme theorising that the Zodiac is none other than Ted Cruz. He's not. But Ted Cruz may be guilty of a lot of things, but the Zodiac killing spree isn't one of them. Cruz was in fact born after the Zodiac killer began murdering people. Though the Ted Cruz theory is clearly intended as a joke, its popularity demonstrates the, the powerful hold the Zodiac killer still retains on the public imagination, occupying that very powerful space that lies just between fascination and fear. Between 1968 and 1969, the Zodiac Killer claimed five victims and injured two more in North California. Here are the basics of what you should know about these crimes and the mystery of their perpetrator. The victims are as follows, David Arthur Faraday and Betty Lou Jensen. The Zodiac shot and killed Faraday aged 17 and Jensen aged 16 on December 20th in 1968. The high school students had been parked on the side of the road in the outskirts of Vallejo, California. Police had no idea why the pair were killed or who had killed them. And then you had Darlene Ferrin and Mike Magoy. Just over six months later on July 5th in 1969, Darlene Ferrin, 22, and Mike, 19, were simply parked near Blue Rock Springs Park, not far from the previous killings. A man shined a flashlight into their car and shot at the couple. Ferrin was killed, but Mike, though seriously injured, was able to give a description of the shooter to the police. Shortly following the shootings, a man called the Vallejo police, claiming credit for them as well as for the Faraday and Jensen killings in December. Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard On September 27th in 1969, Brian Hartnell, 20, and Cecilia Shepard, 22, were picnicking in Napa, California, when they were accosted by a man wearing an executioner's mask with a circle cross symbol on it. There will be more on the symbol later. He tied them up and stabbed them multiple times, leaving a message for the police written on a car door. Shepard died of her injuries in the hospital, while Hartnell survived. And then finally, Paul Stein. On October 11th, 1969, cab driver Paul Stein was shot in the head by a passenger. A number of teenagers witnessed the attack and alerted police giving a full description similar to the one they already had for the Zodiac Killer. They contributed to the sketch of the killer. Bizarrely, when police went to the crime scene to look for the killer, there was a mix-up in which the police dispatcher told them they should be looking for a black suspect. Two officers then encountered and let pass a white man resembling the Zodiac's description. Later, the Zodiac would mention the mistake in a letter suggesting that the officers had in fact been in contact with the killer, only to let him slip away. In the decades since the Stein murder, a number of other killings have been linked to the Zodiac, though none of them have been confirmed. The Letters Well, starting in 1969, following the attack of Ferrin and Mike, the killer began sending letters to Bay Area newspapers taking credit for the killings and threatening further violence. In a 1969 letter to the San Francisco Examiner, the killer identified himself as Zodiac for the first time. These letters also often contained cryptograms and ciphers along with messages that these codes would reveal the killer's identity to those who managed to decipher them. The letters were also accompanied by the Zodiac signature, 
a now famous symbol featuring circle with a cross running through it. I'll try and post the puzzles and the letters up on screen if they are not copyrighted. If not, you can find the links for them in the description. The killer included details of the murders and the letters that proved his identity as the Zodiac. One letter was even accompanied by a piece of fabric from the shirt of one of his victims. Although there are five confirmed Zodiac victims, there is reason to believe that there may have been as many as 37. As in one letter, the killer included the note, Me equals 37, San Francisco PD equals zero. The letters mysteriously stopped in 1974. No one has ever been identified as the Zodiac Killer, but as many suggest, three suspects tend to dominate theories about the murders. Number 1. Arthur Lee Allen Political cartoonist Robert Graysmith, who worked at the San Francisco Chronicle when the murders began in the late 60s, alleged that the Zodiac was Arthur Lee Allen. There are a number of factors that place Allen under suspicion. For example, on the day of the Zodiac's third attack at Lake Berisa, Allen said he was going scuba diving in that lake. He came back covered in blood and bearing a knife. Remember, the Zodiac stabbed his victims at that lake. A friend of Allen said that he'd heard Allen refer to himself as Zodiac, and when police searched Allen's trailer, they found bloody knives, sexual objects, and dissected animals. In a later search, they found homemade bombs. Allen was jailed for child molestation starting in 1974, which happened to be when the Zodiac letter stopped. The second theory is Earl Van Best Jr. Gary L. Stewart wrote a book arguing that the Zodiac killer is in fact his father. Earl Van Best Jr. Van Best bears a striking resemblance to the police sketch developed after Paul Stein's murder though he does not resemble earlier descriptions, and the number of letters in his name coincides with one of the Zodiac ciphers. Number 3 is Lawrence Kane Lawrence Kane lived near where the victims lived or died, and the sister of one of his victims claimed that he had been bothering his sister in the weeks before she was murdered. One of the cops who encountered the man, who may have been the Zodiac following Paul Stein's murder, also said that Kane bore the best resemblance to the man he'd seen at the street shortly after the killing. The enduring mystery of the Zodiac killings, along with their brutality and the killer's penchant for attention seeking and toying with the police, mean that the Zodiac continues to engage popular interests in books, films and yes, strange political memes. If you want more info on the Zodiac killings, I'll leave plenty of links in the description for your own reading pleasures. And if you did enjoy, please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And as always, have a pleasant evening.